to this week's video tutorial on uh, SketchUp and rendering some SketchUp images using Photoshop. So essentially what you're going to be required to do for your compendium and for your design studio is to render out some of the SketchUp uh, designs that you have created or uh, things that you've manipulated from your touchstone and then the development of that process into a series of different maquettes or models or pieces of architecture. So for today we're going to start off in SketchUp and then we're going to have a look at scenes, uh, viewports, shading, shadow, all of these sorts of things and then it's going to be a second video for part two which is where we'll take those images we create in SketchUp and we're going to render in Photoshop adding some textures, some colors, some people and adding some context and some background as well. So there's two parts to this tutorial this week, so video one, video two, part one and part two. So for today what we're going to need in SketchUp is we're going to be playing around with scenes, we're going to be looking at the styles of shading of your um, drawing as well, so that's going to be important. We're also going to be uh, looking at shadow and lighting as well. So if you don't have these things set up, make sure you get your workspace set up ready to go. You're going to need to go into tools and sorry, not tools, view and toolbars. And that's going to bring up all the things we need. So styles is these ones up here, those different um, hidden lines and rendered viewpoints. Uh, we're going to need scenes, which I'll show you where to find in a second. We're also going to need shadows. So be able to turn those ones on. So make sure in your toolbars you turn on at least shadows and styles. Close that and then you're going to want to come over to window and to scenes. There we are. So what Scenes allows you to do is to create a, a locked-in saved viewpoint. So for example, if we, we scan through these scenes that are pre-made here, we can have different views that are locked in ready to go so that when we're doing perspectives, we know we're going to have the perspective rendered out from exactly the same viewpoint every time that we're doing it. So if we have to come back to that viewpoint later to re-render it out or get some lines or do some shadow work we know they're always going to be in the same position and the way you make a scene is by so i'll come down to my last scene essentially you'll have an empty box here you can move your model to wherever you want get it to where you want it to be make sure it's about human eye height when you're making the scene of course and then we're going to click plus it's going to bring up this dialog box uh, which is talking about new styles and so styles we know before which was these things up here whether it's hidden line or rendered geometry or anything like that we're going to go save as a new style and create scene and so that's added a new scene there scene 8 which we can see here so we can go back to scene 8 there and it's going to take us back to where we had it um, and this is really useful when we're doing our rendering later click plus again it's going to add a new scene that's scene 9 so if I go from eight to nine it's going to have those there ready to go beautiful okay so once you've got all your scenes in place and remember we, we want to see this thing from lots of angles you'll need to be able to see it from looking down uh, the pedestrian street from the car from across the street in elevation from sitting inside this thing from inside looking out um, so we want to have lots of views um, when we're doing our renders so make a lot of scenes and be prepared to do a lot of rendering and a lot of work in Photoshop. And of course, we want to see all of these things in your compendium and everything on the Google Drive as well. So now that I've got my scenes, what I want to do is I want to pick one scene for now that we're going to render from. Uh, and ordinarily, Windows, Windows is going to be set up to have your edge styles showing. So you, you're normal viewpoint is going to look something like this with lots of black lines around there um, that aren't particularly nice in our render. So what we want to do, make sure we're locked into our viewpoint that we want um, and we want to go view, edge style, uncheck edges, view, edge style, uncheck profiles and that's going to give us a nice clean look for our view when we take it into Photoshop. We're going to do this in three stages. We're going to take it 
as the image itself so as it is without shadow or without lines and then we're going to take a second render with shadow and then we're going to take a third render with lines so that we can layer the three over the top of each other in Photoshop uh, and then we can play with the realism or lack of realism as you want to. So first one we want to render. We want to come over to file for 2D graphic and then it's going to ask you where to put it. I'm going to put one on the desktop and then come down to options. It's going to ask you what you want uh, to do with your options. Now, depending on which version you're using or whether you're on Windows or Mac, it'll also give you the option to turn up or down the DPI or PPI, so which is your uh, resolution. As a general rule of thumb for Windows, if you turn this up to 3000, it will give you a good image size, or if you're on your Mac, you can put your DPI or PPI up to 300. And we want to make sure anti-aliasing is always on because that smooths out these lines so they're not so jaggedy. We want to have the quality all the way up to the highest it can go there. Uh, and then we export it. That's done. Happy days as a JPEG. Uh, and that's what it's going to do. Now the second one we want is we want to take just the shadow. So now it's looking at the shadow on this face. We're going to go the same thing again. Don't need to move anything. File, export, 2D graphic, JPEG, our options should be the same, 3000 anti-aliasing, good. We export that again, but we'll call this one shadow. Then the final one we want to do, we're still on scene 6, is we want to turn our lines on. So let's get these lines that we have back okay here we go so these are the hidden lines so in the style here instead of in render we want to be in hidden line and so this is just going to bring up the lines of the drawing so that we can toggle the lines on and off in photoshop by putting it on a separate layer so this is the final render we want to do out of this viewport export 2d graphic and we're just going to call this one line. Always double check, make sure they're all the same. 3000, all good. Okay. Export. So essentially, that's how we render out of SketchUp instead of uh, Rhino or ArchiCAD, where we would use V-Ray or something like that to render inside the actual software using an engine. Uh, for SketchUp, what we like to do is just take the geometry, the shadows and the lines, and then we'll overlay them on top of each other using Photoshop and add in some textures and colors and people in there and you'll get some pretty nice results. So that's part one. Have a play with that. Make sure you have a look at different scenes and different ways to do this. Play with the different variations of lines and what you can get in your styles. Toggle your shadow on and off. And remember, file, export, 2D graphic is how you're going to get all of those. Okay, make sure you jump on to the next video tutorial where we're going to take these into Photoshop and start rendering our images for Albany Highway for the Compendium and for Studio. See you shortly. Thanks, guys. Bye.